Hi, I'm Peter Prevost, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to export an alt mode file to a word processor format. So that can be open document text format or um, docx for Office 365. So this is particularly useful if you want to share your alt mode writings with other people who are not blessed by the church of Emacs and um, can't read alt mode files. We're going to do this with the standard uh, Emacs Writing Studio configuration, but all the functionality I'm showing you pretty much works out of the box without any configuration. So let's stop talking and start doing. This is the alt mode file that we've been using to demonstrate the various functionalities of alt mode export. So in this video, we're going to look at exporting this little document to word processor format. So that's open document text, but it could also be docx for Office 365, but also a PDF. So let's go down here to this uh, image, which shows all the principles of the alt mode export functionality. So you have an alt mode file, which is this one. It uh, has a bibliography attached to it. And then from there, alt mode can export it to various formats. In this case, we're looking at ODT, open document text. So alt mode, to, to achieve this, alt mode exports this alt mode file to a couple of XML files that are formatted to ODT standard. And then that is zipped together in an uncompressed file. So it becomes one file with the ODT extension. That means that to export to Word document, uh, to Word processor format, you will need the zip executable install, installed on your system. Now there's a second step to this as well. Uh, Emacs can also call on LibreOffice to then convert that ODT file to either docx for Office 365 compatibility or to a PDF file. So let's show the basic principles. So what does this look like? So Control C, Control E for export, then the O for ODT, then we have two options. We can then save this as an ODT file in the same directory as the source file, or we can also open this ODT file because uh, Emacs is capable of reading these files natively. But let's first just save it on disk. So now that's happened. And there's a new file here which we can see in DRED, orgdemo.odt. Now, we can open this in LibreOffice. There we go. And it's just a normal LibreOffice file. And from here, we can do everything we need, do some final editing or share it with somebody else or whatever your purpose might be. As I said, we can also open these files in Emacs itself. Now, how does that happen? We have DocView. DocView is not the fastest um, tool in the shed, but DocView then converts this ODT file through PDF and then uh, displays it through its normal PDF capabilities. So let's go to page size. And here we see the file in read-only format, right? We can't do any edits here. Now, to explain a little bit more about this file format, I'm going to sh uh, show you the internals of an open document format. So Control C, Control C now shows me the file content of that zipped file. So this is the internals of an open document file. And we have a MIME type file, which tells your computer what type of file this is. The content, so this is the actual content of the document is down here. I can now, for example, search for, say, a preamble, which was our first heading. And that is the XML here for the table of contents. If we search for the next version here, then we can see that we have a textile, which is an unnumbered heading. Um, it has a reference, and here's the actual text preamble, and then that's the paragraph that sits underneath it, and so on and so on. So the full content is here converted to XML. There's also a manifest, which explains files that are associated in this zip file. The styles.xml, that's important. This actually defines what everything looks like. So that's like a CSS file or a document class in, in LaTeX, and more about this later. There's a meta XML with uh, metadata. And just to show you how that works, let's go back to the top of the document. You see here that there's a correspondence that the author, the 
uh, there's a creator an author um the generator emacs writing studio which i had as a variable um in here as creator there's keywords in the subject and so on which makes it a bit easier to find these documents on a big document control system then we have some images in this case we have two images so image one is the image we discussed previously and image two that's the formula the latex formula that's embedded in this document and more about that later so we have full control over this xml file here which can be pretty useful okay so that's about the document format now look at now let's start looking at some of the options that we have to control the look and feel of your document so if we go to this image here, we have a caption, just like any other export. Uh, it has a name for referencing. Um, then we have attributes for org mode, LaTeX and HTML, which are ignored. But here's an attribute for ODT. So we see here that we're scaling this image 0.5 uh, and it's anchored to the page. Now there's some options available here and they are, uh, we can set the width, we can set the height, set the scale like in this case. Uh, we can also anchor to a paragraph and anchor as a character. How do you know all this? We can go to the alt mode manual or control H capital R and then press G and we say ODT image. And here the manual explains all the detail of the various attributes that you can use. So that's about uh, images. There's not a whole lot more to be said. Now tables, there is a table down below here. Okay, remember in this document, there are two tables. One is a standard Altmore table. That's the first one here with the country sizes and a special table from the table.el package. Now this table here is exported as, as is. And what I'll do is I'll pull up the exported version again to look at the table and you see here that there is the first table which is, um, flows across two pages but there's the caption and we set the relative width to 50 percent of the page that is of course changeable the formatting of the table is a complex area which is explained in the org mode manual so these are standard tables uh, the special tables in table.el and they're special because alt mode tables can't span over columns and rows they don't quite work in uh, odt export so that's unfortunate and they just simply get ignored so you see that there's just nothing in this document uh, for this table and that's that's unfortunate if you want to know more about tables in alt mode odt it's again Control h capital r we go to the alt mode manual and then press g and odt table will give you some instructions on um, how to get tables into the document the next chapter next topic is mathematics so here is a formula which is a latex formula that's uh, shown with some special characters but we can switch that off there we go here's a latex formula now to export these in an odt format there are two options we can export it as a PNG file, which is what I've done here. And then it's an options setting. Options keyword is tech DVI PNG. And you can see that that's what we have here, text P DVI PNG. And as you saw earlier, the formula is an image within embedded within this uh, zip file. So we go back to mathematics. There's another option to not use um, raster graphics, but to use uh, a more sophisticated way, which is the mathematical markup language, MathML. To be able to do that, you need to install software such as um, LaTeX uh, ML to convert a LaTeX formula to this mathematical markup language. I've installed that software. Then the other thing we need to do is set this variable org latex to a mathml convert command because there's various options and so let's set this and then this options part instead of dvi png 
I set this to true. When I now export this document, the formula is still there. But what we see in the uh, in the bowels of the document, if you like, is that instead of two images, we now have an XML file that is the actual formula. So this is the MathML language, uh, and it translates this formula to the MathML language. But again, you do need to have access to uh, a MathML converter for this to work. The manual also gives some instructions. So control H capital R org, and then we can ODT math. So the math, uh, the, the manual explains this a bit further, and there's also an option for another MathML converter, but you can read this at your leisure. So this is about mathematics. Next, we can talk a little bit about citations, but I've done already that in also in previous videos. The org mode export or org mode uh, has three different citation tools. One is the basic citation tool, which is good for internal use, but perhaps not for publications. And that converts any citations to plain text, and then it goes into the export. You can also do this with the citation style language. And there's a link to the citation style language. And you can download CSL definitions. So within uh, the repository, I have the APA6, so the um, American Psychological Association version 6 CSL file to convert my citations. And then I have up here, site export CSL and APA6 CSL. So to use CSL, you need to have one of these little files. We can't use uh, uh, LaTeX citations because it will export those LaTeX commands and uh, LibreOffice or Microsoft Word don't know what to do with that. So I recommend citation style language because it gives you a great flexibility in how to deal with citations. Now look at some uh, advanced formatting specifically for ODT format. Now we've seen in a previous video that we can insert LaTeX commands and, and macros, etc. Now all this is ignored when you export to uh, ODT, the same for HTML and uh, EPUB. So in ODT, we have some special formatting. Now to do the special formatting that we've seen above, with very um, detailed changes to the text, you will need to hack the uh, styles.xml file, but that's out of the scope of EWS because it's a no-code environment. Now, what we can do is create our own styles.xml file using LibreOffice itself. And to do that, you can use any LibreOffice document. And then it would be good to have options H10 and NumT, so that um, creates uh, enough levels of styles within your document and that's what we have set up here so that means that this odt file that i have done here i can use that to create a my own styles at xml file and we'll do that in libreoffice itself so let's open this in libreoffice now when i now press f11 i see here all the different styles that are defined within this particular document now what we see here that alt mode has created some specific ones that it uses itself that's slightly unfortunate because it means you can't use uh, all sort of templates you might have created before the stuff you download from the web that can be problematic so uh, we have the org title here for example and let's say i want my titles always to be a, a different color than it is now so for example we'll pick that nice bright red titles uh, and also, just for the sake of it, let's also redefine the font. And uh, I want this to bitstream sans uh, serif. Let's so it really stands out. Okay, so this is now. Let's say this is the style, and I can go through the whole document and change everything I I want. Um, for example, there's the uh, heading one. I can change that as well. Edit style, and I want my headings to be blue. Okay, 
So here's now my new template. The content within this file doesn't matter at all. So it is all, we're only changing here the styles XML file. So to now create a new template, we save this as, let's call it a template, OTT. So that is a ODT file without any content. It only has a styles XML file. Okay, let's save this. And now we can close LibreOffice. Okay, back to the org file. What I can do now here in my ODT styles file, I uncomment this. And it is called template.ott. So now when I export this file, org mode will read template.ott, extract the styles.xml file, and use that into the newly exported format. So let's demonstrate this. Okay, there we go. So what we see now is we have the nice bright red title and the blue um, heading one as well, which should go all the way through the document. There we go. So this gives you pretty much full control over the look and feel of your document and create your own Word documents. There's a lot more to be said about um, changing the, the templates, the advanced formatting for org mode. I won't go into that in the video. Again, uh, we, we go to the org mode manual and we can search for ODT and there are advanced topics in ODT export. You can read this at your leisure, but this is all about uh, hacking the XML file, etc., and shows you how to set uh, very detailed options for org mode export. So you see there's quite a few capabilities there to export your org mode file to a word processor document. In my own personal workflow, I have a, a OTT template that allows me to write an org mode and with all the benefits of Emacs, but then export it to docx file in the corporate style for the place that I work. So that uh, gives me uh, the wonderful benefits of writing an Emacs, but still being able to share my work with my colleagues. The con configuration you've seen here is Emacs Writing Studio. Um, in the description below, there is the link to the GitHub repository, which also contains the demo file. Uh, it also contains a full book about how to use Emacs as a writing tool. Uh, you can find the source code freely on the GitHub file. If you want to support my work, you can also buy the book as a paperback or um, as an ebook from your favorite retailer. I'll look on the Emac Writing Studio website. Uh, thanks for your time, and I hope to see you again in a future video.